so did you, could you see eight patterns in your childhood? Cause I've been trying to like think back and I, and I kind of grew up in like a, a, a pretty impoverished like home and uh, my sister's a counterphobic six. So you can kind of, you can kind of grasp like the environment that I was in, but my dad being a type eight, like I did, I couldn't really see where I started to, to, to have that mentality. But so I had, did you, were you able to kind of track that? I mean, uh, explain what I mean. What would a type eight childhood pattern look like? I guess. What are you thinking about when you ask that question? Um, that's a great question. So, some of the red is like the eight kind of felt like they needed to, like their innocence was lost at an early age. They had to grow up quicker. And I was like, I, I don't. I mean, yeah, I, I think that that, in hindsight, I think that that probably applies to me. Um, at the time, it didn't. I, I, I mean, at yeah. the time, you didn't recognize it. You know, you don't recognize it at the time. It's only only in hindsight. In hindsight, I think that that is certainly accurate. Yeah. That's interesting. I feel like a lot of the message that I, that I received from my dad was like, you need to toughen up and you need to be strong. And so I kind of... I kind of heard that and I'm like, okay, it's not, so it must not be okay to be the opposite. Mm -hmm. So there was like certain times where, so for example, like a lot of my childhood was like, my mom worked third shift and I was at home with my dad and my sister and they would do, my sister's four years older than me. So they would, they would do little pranks on me and shit like that. And I was, I was naive at that time. Like, oh, so-and-so is at the door and no one would be there. They'll laugh. I'm like, man, fuck you guys. Like you guys are absolute dicks. Like, I'm this little cute little kid. And you guys are taking advantage <laughs> of me. <laughs> but there was one time my dad, it was really interesting. He said, you were really innocent and like fun loving from four to 12. I was like four to 12. What happened after 12? But I remember one thing when I was like, I was probably six and my sister was like 10. My dad would almost like, my sister was a lot bigger than me and she would like kind of punk me and shit like that. And he would, he would like t test me and try to make me stronger. So there was one time where I was playing football and my sister's like, I can run DJ over. And there, and my dad's loving it. He's like, Oh yeah, D she's going to run your ass over. I was like, man, fuck that. He's like, all right, let's see. So we did an Oklahoma drill. She puts all her gear on all my gear on actually. And my dad said, all right. And he told my sister, he's like, there's going to be a time when he gets bigger and he's going to fuck you up. He's like, you need to, you need to stop all that, that, that all the funny, like, He's going to get pissed and you're going to get hurt. She's like, no, I can do it. That counterphobic six. Like, I, I'm strong. I can do that shit. <laughs> so my dad said, all right. So we go in the backyard. She puts all her gear on. He's like, this is going to happen. When I say hike, you guys are going to run at each other. And whoever, whoever pancakes the person wins. So I already feel it, like at odds. I'm like, she's bigger than me. I'm getting punked by my sister. I'm like, you know what? Fuck that. I'm done with this shit. <laughs> My dad says hike, and I'm I'm furious. I run at her, smack her helmet off, stood over. I was like, oh, what's up? Mm. She was like, ah, oh, and she's crying. <laughs> My dad was like, uh huh, and don't cry to your mom because I told you this day would come. And it was so I was like, I knew I wasn't no bitch. Like, so it was like it was like stuff like that where my dad would try to like in like dad ways would try to get you to you know be strong. And so I think I kind of attached to that mentality so i don't think i really had any like there wasn't any like crazy event in my life that was like oh i need to survive it was more of like little things like that that kind of developed over time but i don't think that i i don't think that i, I was taught that what so my mom was really the, the primary parent my dad worked a lot but yeah so, so we probably had you know the gender it sounds like you spent more time with your dad i spent more time with my mom um, yeah, I was never he, he never really taught me that gave me those same sort of lessons, um, ex at least explicitly or consciously. Now, there was 
certainly interactions. Um, you know, I learned from my dad by dealing with my dad that um, you're not going to get your way by being a little fucking bitch. <laughs> right, right. Um, uh, but I do, I do remember hearing my mom say exactly the same things that your dad said about like you, you were a good kid until middle school. Yeah, that's so weird. Yeah, it's, like that's, I mean, it sort of makes sense, but it was, you know, that's when puberty is. That's when that's when people right. do kind of kind of spring bad. But um, right. But. Yeah, and and then when I went for it, I went for it, and I and I never yeah. stopped going for it until I was <laughs> until <laughs> until now until I'm in my thirties and I've you know the the state isn't fucking with me anymore. I was looking at, I was looking at fifteen years. I'm like, okay, fine, you guys win. I'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, but eight pattern. So yeah, I, I think I think I would say say that probably I have a similar experience to you all in all is there wasn't there probably wasn't like one earth shattering moment. It's more just how you are and how you evolve. And then you, when you go from being a child to being a man, right. at that point, like things kick in hard. And so, you know, my like I said, my dad never the only the only thing about that that my dad ever taught me. Um, was the first time I ever got in a fight, mm. and I was a little kid uh, at a playground, and two older kids kind of beat me up a little bit because they told me to stay off of one side of the park they were at, and so I got <laughs> so I got on the jungle gyms and went straight the fuck over to their side. Well, I got beat up <laughs> until, <laughs> and uh, uh, and when I was home that night, you know, I was fucking irate, uh, <laughs> I was crying mad and blah. blah. And my dad came in, you know, he's, he said, look, he said, hey, what do you say? He said, don't ever fight unless you have to. But if you mm. have to, don't stop hitting them until they stop moving. And then he was gone. And that was it. And that's and, <laughs> <laughs> and it stuck with me. <laughs> that's incredible. That's yeah. so funny. He's an ENTJ, too. I don't know if he's an he's 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 got he's he's an eight, three and a six tri type. I don't know what order they're in. I don't think the eight is first, but it's mm. there. Interesting. Yeah, my dad did the same thing. Like, I mean, my dad grew up fighting. He had to, he had to, I mean, he had to fight all the time. But yeah, he always told me, he's like, don't start it, don't start it, but finish, always finish it. Mm. And I remember one time, it was just, and now, now as I'm processing it, a lot of it was like kind of um, rules that I kind of, that were in the back of my mind. Okay, don't start it, but but finish it. And I remember in the fourth grade, this kid was he was mad at me for some shit, and uh, he came behind me when we were leaving school and started kicking me. And I remember in that moment, like my dad said, if someone if someone starts it, you're you're allowed to to defend yourself or turn around. I'll just punch him right in the chin, and he falls to the ground. He's like, oh my face, my face. And so I start dipping. I'm like, fuck this. I'm not getting in trouble. So I run to the car. I'm like, mom, hit the gas. <laughs> She's like, what? And I'm yelling, I'm like, go. Stop talking. Go. I'm in the fourth grade. And my dad, like, <laughs> talk <laughs> my dad talked to me. He's like, so what happened? I was like, he kicked me and I punched him in the face. He's like, all right, then you're fine. I was like, fuck, this is dope. I was like, that's all it takes. But uh, I have my teacher talk. And she she sat me down. She's like, well, you know, you know that you can defend yourself with Dylan. You're, you know, you know, you're bigger than him or whatever, some shit like that. And I was like, well, my dad told me if someone starts it, I have the right to defend myself. And it was so ingrained in my mind. But and then after that, I started getting in fights just because. So, I mean. Oh, yeah, I did too. A lot of them. (laughs) At some some point, you realize two things from fighting. You realize that at least I did it. I assume you did too. I learned that, hey, I'm kind of good at this. And (laughs) yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and I learned that I'm not made out of glass. Like, right. And then, it, and then it was just game over and I fought for years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, and it's, it's kind of cool too. Cause with my dad having the nine wing, he's, he, he always has that boundary with him. And it's just like, don't cross the boundary. If you don't cross the boundary, we're fine. But I would always like, 
we would get into it all the time. I mean, I would poke at him and all, and I would square with him, and he's like, "Go ahead, take the first punch. I promise you, you're gonna be picking your teeth up off the ground." I was like, "Ah, I don't know if I want to engage in this battle. I might lose this one." Oh shit! Yeah, that's one thing. It seems like with people, it doesn't matter how old they get. It seems like dudes can almost never beat up their own dad. That's a fact. Right? That is a fact. Yeah, 